I went into this knowing that uh, it probably wasn't going to work, but I probably learned a few things along the way. Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here. I recently had a request for an update on my Blue Star Inler Aquarium, so I figured I'd better give you one. Uh, my Blue Star Inlers I've had for about two years now. I got them from LR Bretts. Thanks again, Lucas. They're fabulous fish. I love their colors, but one thing about these fish is that they breed pretty quickly. So after a while, my aquarium was starting to get, you know, pretty populated, and I was thinking, well, nutrient export, there are various ways to deal with it. I can step up the water changes, but I thought, I'm just going to run an experiment and see how this goes. I've seen a lot of people grow pothos in their aquariums, and I want to see, first of all, how much nutrient export I can get out of a pothos plant. Is it going to be enough to keep up with these endlers in addition to, you know, water changes and the other plants in the aquarium? And how big can I get the pothos to grow? And so I decided to try it out. So I started out with a few cuttings of pothos that I got from my parents. They'd had that pothos plant for so many years, I was sure there wouldn't be any traces of pesticides on it or anything. They'd never used any. And put them in, and they started to grow within about a week. Roots showed up, and it was, it was growing. But now, I want to give you an update on what has happened with that pothos plant. I think I've shown portions of this in live streams before. And in this window with northern exposure, where it gets bright, indirect light, this pothos plant has absolutely thrived and as you can see here there is more than one vine going all the way around in some places there are three or four vines uh, going every which way and I've been affixing them with these little hooks I just picked up a few of these like vinyl coated or rubber coated hooks something like that and just drill a pilot hole in the wall and then screw these in and they have been working really well. Some of these have really uh, just kind of normally thin stems and then some of them are quite thick as you can see there. But these hooks work admirably to attach them to the wall uh, along the sides of the windowsill. So let's take a look at the tank itself. Now this huge mass of plant material, of course, is the pothos root ball. Goes from the top of the tank all the way down into the gravel. And you can see there are roots that are going down into the gravel from the root ball. And here's a shot from underneath the tank. And you can even see the roots are reaching down right to the bottom of the glass. And there are also some other plants growing in here. I've got some guppy grass that is starting to pick up and do fairly well in here. Of course, there's a lot of hair algae growing in amongst the fronds of the guppy grass. I've got a nice patch of moss that's growing here. I'm not sure exactly which species it is. It doesn't look exactly like Java moss, but some kind of moss that is going in here and here is some of the the, the uh, guppy grass that never recovered from the uh, cyanobacterial outbreak I had a while ago. By the way, just wanted to point out, this is what I used to treat the cyanobacterial outbreak I had in here. Chemiclean seemed to work really well. Within a few days, it had made a huge difference. And I treated it twice, and I haven't had to treat since. Of course, I also increased the airflow with a sponge filter in the corner in addition to the um, bio wheel filter that I'm running over here with an intake sponge. So I don't think that's going to come back, but if it does, I've got this. It's pretty good stuff. And I'll put a link to this uh, Chemiclean in the description. It is fish safe, of course. It's also safe for invertebrates. Pretty cool stuff. All right. So, like I said, there's algae growing in here. Algae growing on the walls, a couple different kinds of algae. But the nice thing is, these little tufts, which look like black beard algae probably, are not doing a whole lot. And neither is the uh, algae that's growing on the glass. 
it uh, doesn't seem to be growing very fast and I think that's partly because of the nutrient export that the pothos has been uh, providing as well as the guppy grass. I believe that uh, eventually I'll win out and the algae will decrease quite a bit more. For fertilizer, besides the obvious waste produced by the fish, I've been providing Aquarium Co-op's Easy Green. It's one squirt per 10 gallons twice a week is the regimen that I've been using. That is the dosage recommended for medium light tanks, so I think that fits pretty well. I like this stuff. This is my second bottle of it. Uh, it seems to really make the pothos thrive, obviously, and the other plants seem to be doing well too. I think part of the uh, problem, why I was having such issues with algae, and I'm still you know, battling those same issues, is partly because of the photo period. I was experimenting with various permutations of the photo period with siesta periods and so on. Recently, I switched to six o'clock, the 24-7, uh, the Finex 24-7 turns on, um, on the 24-7 cycle, but I don't leave the 24-7 cycle on all night. I turn it off at nine, and I think that's a little too long because it does dim down quite a bit. You know, it doesn't start out at full strength. Right now this is at max, which I'm doing for the benefit of filming. This time of day it would normally be much dimmer. Um, but it does, uh, you know, start out fairly dim and then it brightens up gradually throughout the day until at midday it's quite bright and then it slowly dims again and turns off at nine. So that's what I've been doing, but I think it's a little too long. So I am probably going to have it turning off maybe at say six or seven so it's not maybe even earlier than that that's kind of a bummer because that means i never see the tank illuminated really but we'll see how it goes um at any rate it's been fun to watch um i went into this knowing that uh it probably wasn't going to work but i probably learned a few things along the way and i have um so we'll see how it goes the anglers are breeding constantly of course I, I can't get them to stop. I produce far more endlers than um, can really fit in this tank. So I've been trying to ease off on the food. I've been decreasing the quantity of food that I've been giving them to help slow that down a little bit. And it has, but I've still probably got, I don't know, a hundred endlers in here. And um, I do sell them from time to time. They're great. I mean, I love them. Their colors, as you can see, are absolutely brilliant. And they're just really fun fish, but I'm trying to find a way where I can reach an equilibrium in this tank. Oh, please excuse the intake strainer lying in such a strange place. I must have fallen off when I was doing maintenance on the filter sponge the other day. One thing that I can say for certain is that without the nutrient export provided by this huge pothos plant, that the system would not be doing as well as it is. I just dropped in a few pellets of sinking food and now they're just starting to notice it. So, I guess you could say that this experiment is a work in progress. I've had a few setbacks, but I've learned a lot of, along the way and it's been fun. And that pothos plant is pretty cool. So, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to see if I can eventually find that tipping point where um, I'm not having a lot of algae issues anymore and that the biomass of the pothos as well as the plants in the water column can handle all the waste that uh, the endlers are producing and I need to find the ideal population uh, range for the endlers as well for that to be possible. So I look forward to continuing this experiment. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to rate, share, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.